Yeah. Yeah, the red light's on. So somebody can just. Which is all right. Um, <laughs> kidding. Um, okay, so I apologize to the camera because it's hot in here today. So everybody's sweating and fidgety. It's about what 34, 35 degrees out today, and we got the doors open and. Yeah, it's crazy hot in here. So uh, I'm going to start every lesson with the same diagram because there is, well, there's one new person tonight and everybody else that's here has only either seen it once or twice and whether or not they really understand what's going on yet is still debatable. So we start off with the standard. We all know that we were born. We all know that, that, uh, that, we're, that we're a man, lowercase m-a-n. <clears throat> and the big problem starts uh, as soon as we get in, uh, out, out of man and human rights and we get into the legal person or man-made law, contract law, whatever you want to call it. So man created government and for government to be able to interact with us in commerce, we had the creation of the legal person. Again, I don't mind using my name. I'm not afraid of the government. I don't think there's something that we should be fighting or thinking that, you know, oh man, if they find out I'm out there teaching people their rights, you know, they're going to kick in my door and shoot me, like that kind of stuff. I really just don't believe any of that. If I wind up dead, you'll know I was wrong. <laughs> right? Even that, I don't care because I'm going to die one day anyways. So if they kill me over it, yep, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Cheers to that. It's not like you're working for Rupert. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Someday the, 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 the big executor is going to come for me and that's the end of my life anyway. So I'd rather do, an, do something valuable like teach people their rights before I go. Um, and that way you'll know I was right. I was wrong about the government killing people, but I was right about everything I'm teaching because I'm dead. So, <laughs> so, the legal person, not something to be afraid of. It's a tool. Same way government's a tool. Right? And I've explained that to people before. I've got some really nice uh, power tools over here from my job site. Uh, I shouldn't be afraid of them just because if I was stupid enough to actually nail myself with my hammer, you know, ah, you know I'll throw my air hammer away, you know, because oh, look at that garlic, look what it did to me, you know, I just shot myself. Well, yeah, because I, I shot myself with it, you know, learn to use tools properly and they become very advantageous. They're not nothing to be feared or scared of or walking into court and I'm, I'm not a person, I'm a man. Okay, well, that's... Again, what we've learned in the other two episodes, that's not what's going on in court at all. So it's not like anybody's there to be like, oh, oh, you're, oh, sorry, we didn't know you were a man. Well, I guess we're going to drop all charges against you. Like, that's not going to happen. That's why it's not really a valid argument. So, legal person, where did it come from? Okay. Well, I actually brought my first visual aid, my third appearance in now. So you were born. You're at uh, whatever hospital and the doctor filled out a uh, whatever, something of live birth, I can't remember what they're called, right, with a doctor's signature on it and your parents then filled out a, an application for a birth certificate called the Particulars of Live Birth, which if you go down you get a copy of it and this is mine. I think it's my original actually. Um, no, I do have the original, this is a secondary one. Either way, first thing, it's on legal paper, right? So we know it's an actual legal document. This is a legal sized document. It's from vital stats, particulars of live birth, yada, 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 the whole nine yards, right? So you get one of these. Actually, you don't get one of these. You send one of these into the government. And what you get back out is the birth certificate. And the birth certificate has the name of the legal person on it. So the only thing we're going to be addressing then in all of our lectures, we don't get into human rights and all that kind of stuff because we know what human rights are. We all know what we have the right to do. We have the right to do anything we want anything as long as we don't and what's the three word sentence on that do no harm do no harm it's three letters sorry it's three words it's like seven letters it's the most simple law on the planet and that's your human right do anything you want just do no harm till you do harm you're free to do whatever you want so there's your human rights course right there it's done everyone graduated very simple so legal person what is it well obviously something happened because your parents filled out a form and sent it to the government so that means we have a two-party contract now that created something. And you get this document back from the government that has a name on it, which is a legal person, and it's signed by the Director of Vital Statistics. And that's a big key right there as well, because it's the only document you're ever going to get, usually, from the government, 
that the government signature is on it because it's an obligation on their part. They owe you something. Why do they owe you something? Well, now we have to figure out what the legal person is and why does the government owe you something. So where does this guy come from? Well, I explained it, uh, I explained it once in trust law and I will go through it once in trust law and then convert everything again to corporate law so the terms are easier to, easier to understand. So if your parents, and we'll, we'll switch the triangle around this time now, so it's a little easier so we can start concentrating on public and private. So I'm going to invert the triangle from where it was last time. Right? And we're going to start up here with your parents came and basically were the grantor of an estate. You know what? I'm going to write that bigger just because I noticed in the last two films it's hard to read my writing at times. So grantor which means that your birthright is your share of the commonwealth of this nation. It has value. You can't get a check and just be bought out. It has value but only when it's part of the collective, right? And the government is what represents the collective whole of all the trusts when they're put together and all the value of the commonwealth and they're there really to kind of protect your, 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 your estate. Otherwise, somebody with uh, more guns than you would come along with six of his buddies and just rob you for everything you're worth. So it's actually a good thing. We just have to learn how to use it because it's kind of, we've been directly misled and not educated as to who we are and what our rights are in the public schools, subsequently paid for by them, which is our money. So uh, we've been fooled by our own money. So anyways, your parents are the grantors and they took all the value that is your estate, that is your commonwealth birthright, and they granted it to the government on your behalf because you're a minor. And the grantor and the beneficiary, and beneficiary are the same thing, despite repeated objections I've had with people I know. So I call this the grantor slash beneficiary. Okay, it's a little messy. So they're the grantor and the beneficiary of something. And then, <clears throat> what do we know from the other, the other rules of trust law? There's three rules in trust law. We've got the grantor beneficiary, we've got the trustees, and we've got who else? Executors. Executor of a, of a, of a trust. Trustees are the employees. Trustees are the employees. Well, yeah, we'll get into that. So we've got the executor, yeah. So we've got the executor, and we've got trustees. So we know who we are already because we know we are the grantor and beneficiary of a legal person because we've got the birth certificate. That's a warehouse receipt. That's the starting, the starting point of how we can start to decipher everything that's going on here and who we are. So you got your warehouse receipt from the government that says, thank you for depositing something into our corporation. Uh, here's your receipt. It's a very valuable document. Keep it. I think it even says that on some of the papers you get. Very valuable. Keep it safe, the whole nine yards, yada, yada, right? They never said that was you. You can't be the legal person, but you're a very important component of the legal person. When you become the age of majority, you become the grantor and beneficiary of the legal person. It's all your equity that is in that legal person. And equity is king in commerce. He who owns is in complete control, period. So, we've got the grantor beneficiary, the executor, and then we've got the trustees over here. So we know who we are. We know we're the grantor beneficiary because we've got the receipt at home. So let's just erase that. Let's figure out who we are here. So I already know the dean, the man, is the grantor and the beneficiary of a legal person because I've got the birth certificate. So we'll even write that in here. Birth certificate. Uh, and we can get into all this, but I like to switch it up to uh, I like to switch it to corporate law to help everybody understand, even right at this point already. Um, because once you understand the roles that are being played here, and everyone knows this from last time, if if Dean, the guy with the birth certificate, who is also the grantor and beneficiary, that's the key role. Beneficiary. That's the key role in everything that's going on here. Because now we're going to switch everything to corporate law right away. Because that's essentially what this is, even though you, it's an express trust, for lack of a better word. It really is. 
but it's all based on corporate law, which is corporate law is just trust law. It's a branch of trust law. And I spoke about that last time. Even if you've read Weiss's Trust Handbook, which is only, what, 80-something pages? It's really confusing to people the first 10 times they read it unless they know something about law or they're good at reading, right? It's just very confusing. So there's no point in trying to explain that. But everyone understands corporations. So let's just pretend he's a corporation, which he is. He's a form of a corporation. Now, in corporate law, we've got almost the same, it's, it's the same matrix, because we'll talk about that, but why everything follows the, the, the same, the same three-party matrix here. And if we were to switch to corporate law, the guy with the birth certificate, the guy who is the grantor, the beneficiary, the guy who invested everything into a company, who is he? Shareholders. Shareholders. Now, in bigger companies, obviously, they have all sorts of different shares you buy, and they got multiple types of share, you know, shareholders and different shareholders and different kinds of voting shares and everything else. But for our purposes, we now are actually the sole shareholder of all the equity in the birth certificate. Owner. Um, owner. I wouldn't even call it owner, right? No one really, no one really owns the name. When, when, when you look at shares, it says you own a share of the company. You own a share. You own that, but that's so the, the share of the company is the equity, though. No one really owns the company. So that's another point here, too, is people have asked me, and I've heard the question come up many, many times, well, who owns title to the name, and who owns the name, and this and that? And the simple answer is nobody. The legal person is its own entity, right? It can buy property. It can sell property. It has rights. It can sue. It can be sued. It can do all sorts of stuff but it needs people to act for it to do that. And that's where us acting in different roles and capacities comes in. And we have to learn those roles, but we've never been taught them ever. So it's almost like foreign concepts to us once we finally do understand it. That's why I sometimes like to ask people, you know, like, do I want me to go back over something? Because I do understand it, and I realize a lot of people don't at first. So it's, and I, I don't, it's hard to really understand what level people are at sometimes. So we're just going to keep going over this model every time we teach one, we teach one of these lessons, lessons first. So now we know Dean, the man, Again, I'm going to write that bigger because I promised I would. Dean. Dean is the sole shareholder of the legal person or the corporation. He's the sole shareholder. He's the only one that owns equity in the legal person. But no one else does. It was my share of the Commonwealth that went into the creation of this as a contract with the government. That's well, yeah. Good point. I like that. Um, so, who are the other roles here? Well, if this was corporate law, in trust law, the executors are the ones who basically uh, di di direct the way the, the estate's going to be uh, going to be dealt with after the death of uh, of the of the grantor kind of thing, right? So, an executor in corporate law would be the same thing as a director. Somebody on the board of directors, somebody who's in control of the corporation. Executive authority, exactly, because that's all an executor is in trust law. So, exec, um, executor and uh, administrator, I like to call it too. Executive decisions. Trustees. Well, we've only got one part left in a corporation here. We got the we got the investors and shareholders. We've got the directors, and then we've got the employees of a corporation. So we can even leave trustee there and just write employees below it. trustees or, a little or in here, employees. So, we've identified ourselves as the sole shareholder of the corporation or the legal person. It's ours. We own all the equity. No one else has claim to our share of the commonwealth. Whatever that might be, it's ours, even though it's part of the collective, the greater good of Canada. So, how do we know who a director is then? Shareholder appoints directors. Shareholders owns everything. They want to appoint somebody to make sure that corporations being run properly in corporate law. So the shareholders get together. They have little shareholders meetings. Uh, usually most corporations, all the shares are owned by the director of a corporation, right? I don't know. At least most of them. At least most of them, whichever, yeah. So either way, they get together. They have shareholder meetings. And uh, shareholders are the only ones that can get together and appoint or remove directors based on performance. Like we don't like the way that what the